morning. We're still on a long range fishing trip to Polaris Supreme out of San Diego, California. Still in Mexican waters. That's right. We've limited out on bluefin tuna, uh, which you probably saw in our previous video. And the captain has decided to put us on some uh, rockfish or possibly yellowtail. Ling cod too. Ling cod as well. And um, we're now going to be able to drop down traditional slow pitch jigs. And I can kind of show you guys what I'm working with right here. Um, I'm doing the first drop because I'm not sure exactly our depths. I'm just going 250 guava torpedo and Christopher Doyle over here. Uh, we've been told that there's a sticky bottom and um, so Chris has uh, opted to actually not put a hook on the bottom. I'm going to give it a shot just to see what's down there. But we're going straight to the ball bearing swivel and then uh, there's Will. Anyways, so back to Chris Doyle's um, jig right here. <laughs> morning Will. Good morning. Show the guys what you got man. Super Glow 250 pink and glow. That's Double it. hook. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's go drop some jigs, traditional yeah. slow fish style. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. I want to show you guys some of the setups that these guys are using for uh, these rockfish out here. Well, look, they got like a lot of uh, squid skirts going on and then they're putting these sardines on there this is all metal with dropper loops going down this looks like a piece of uh cut bait off of one of the fish that we caught see a lot of that going on here let's walk around they're using a uh, dropper loop kind of like we use for yellowtail on the east coast hope you guys can hear me we don't do this engine stuff but a uh, little dropper loop going on there but uh, there's just an endless supply of sardines in these tanks right here. So they've got three things they can scoop out of right there, out of these tanks. And you can see that you know they're using uh, dropper loops with uh, bait, pretty typical to what we do. There's Julian right there. This is the this is the scoop these guys are using to throw uh, the sardines over the side whenever we were going for the tuna fish. This is our new scoop. The old scoop got jumped. It was a scoop, so. New scoop looks good. New scoop. Got it. I'm gonna switch this guy up to the ridge, gold and red. See if they like this color a little better. Just to kind of recap what's going on here, we're going for rockfish, essentially because we've already limited out on bluefin tuna. So we know that this is a bottom species. We know that there's a chance of a lean cod, which is a bigger fish. Um, and we're gonna have to use the gear that we brought with us. And the lightest line that I had was 40 pound test. Um, I would have really preferred to be at 30 or 20 um, for what we were about to do only because that would cut me through the water better. I would be able to cut through current and be able to stay vertical longer. And what we're thinking in our minds is essentially, you know, we're gonna do just like we do for grouper back home. We're gonna switch up jigs until we find out what color that they're keying in on and then hopefully start to catch some fish. And I started out with the uh, KP Torpedo, which is the uh, blue and pink torpedo and I was getting bites but I wasn't getting as many bites as I wanted to once I switched it up to the golden red ridge that's when things really started to pick up for me basically every drop that I was putting the jig down I was catching fish as the bites pretty hot we got a lot of uh, salmon groupers coming over the rail uh, vermilion rockfish coming over the rail and they really seem to be uh, keyed in on the on the golden red jigs right now so I'm drop down, I'm gonna tap bottom, see if we can't get tight. But uh, action's been pretty hot. I'd like to get one of those uh, vermilion rockfish. I haven't caught one yet. Okay. Oh, Will's hooked up. Get that camera on him. Oh, Johnny doll. 
we go. Hooked up, baby. Woo! <laughs> I got the... There we go. And then I'm just going to give it the old traditional point the tip down and let the reel do the work. Hard to believe that we were catching big tunas on these same setups last night. And uh, these fish are really keyed into the slow pitch action. It seems like every time we're putting it down now, uh, we're getting tight. So this is a highly effective, highly effective and just absolute fun, man. Absolute fun. I think, uh, I think as guys here and uh, out of San Diego and California really start keying in to slow pitch. Corey's tight right next to me. All right. You guys are gonna have, just have so much fun doing this. This guy's a little heavier than my last one. I'm gonna come around, come around this anchor right here, up into the corner next to my boy James. West Coast Jigger's in the house, guys. Let's see what, uh, Let's see what flavor we got this time. You hooked up, James? Hooked up, baby. Here we go. And I got, oh, I got a good one. I got the, uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, Johnny. No, yeah, that's a vermilion uh, rockfish, right? Yeah, that's it. I got to do a picture with this guy. Let's talk slow pitch jigging rockfish. Uh, first of all, we dropped our jigs down uh, without any real idea what was going to happen. And as soon as we felt uh, the bottom and our jigs hit the bottom, we began traditional pitch flutter on the bottom, pitch flutter on the bottom, add a, a portion of a crank in, pitch flutter, and we were staying tight to the bottom, working it, seeing if we can get a strike. Sure enough, we did and fish started coming over the rail that we had never seen before, that we had never seen you know, in person before. And uh, the, the main species that were being caught were the salmon grouper, the vermilion red or red snapper rockfish, and then the starry rockfish, which is also known as the spotted rockfish. Really cool fish because it has like the white spots, almost like a snowy grouper. Uh, but it's it's a rockfish. It's red, and uh, uh, rockfish kind of have this this similarity to a cross between a grouper and a snapper. They're in the scorpion fish family. Um, their table fare, for the most part, is great, and um, and it started to become a lot of fun uh, catching these fish on the jig. Chris is hooked up. Chris is tight. There we go. There's the sea lion there's jumping up with the fish. Right there. There's your fish. That's your fish, yeah, James. That's it. Oh, that's a beaut. Hey. Sorry. It's okay. That's a 30 pound yellowtail. Uh oh, this just got heavier. Chris just got heavier. There must be another sea lion out here. Going over there. Chris is tight. Well, you, get, you hooked on something on the bottom. Yeah. And they start coming. Up. Fish and then I was winding it up about halfway. I get ripped by one of the sea lions out there. And you just know it because he yeah. starts ripping drag. Starts ripping drag. And, and we're like, oh, he got sharked. He got sharked. <laughs> sea, sea lions. Sea lions. <laughs> it's just crazy for us. And then yeah. and then the cool thing about sea lions that, that sharks don't give you the, gratis, the um, satisfaction of doing is then they surface just you know a couple yards away from the boat and throw your fish up into the air and begin playing with it but at least you can see what you had yeah, yeah, what you lost yeah. yeah so we'll give you guys a little clip now of uh james hooked into a sea lion <laughs> 
West Coast Sealers. Shark by Seal. Dead Seal. Get Dead Seal. Low gear. Low gear. No low gear. He's going to get his jig back, his leader will be scuffed, and he'll be able to see the fish that he would have been able to eat for dinner tomorrow night. This is the tax man on the west side. Seals. Or sea lion. Sea lion. Whatever your fancy. Sea lion. It's, there he is. There he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, this thing got to be real. 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 Just put it on your feet. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, he's oh, 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 Oh there, he gave up. No, get him. <laughs> There's what's left. That's the tax man. That is the tax man out of San Diego. They're called sea lions. Sea sharks. And they really like James yeah. from West Coast Jiggers. <laughs> Talk to me, Christopher Roy. Always hooked up. Bouncing the bottom, just like snapper grouper fishing in Florida. We're about to get a floater if you want to stick it over the rail. Let's see what we got. Over there, but. Get down to the float, boat a little so bit. Just gonna pull there he is. Oh, that's the right one. Hey. Here, give me the line. That's the one we want. So that's yeah. that's a, that's the vermilion rockfish, guys. Chris Doyle is going to hold this guy up for you oh, here. With the jig, with the jig. Sure. Chris Doyle is going to hold this guy up. I can do this to him, right? Or is he going to get me? Right, uh, watch out for the gill plate. There's some, see the spikes Should I go mouth or yeah, what? Yeah, I just look them. Let me get in that look and mouth of yours. Let me go back here. Right here. Flip the jig around. Very important stuff here, Johnny. Up, guys, I lost them. Yeah, let's see if they're as stupid as red grouper. I'm gonna drop it right back down to them. Here we go, crystals hooked up. Damn, he went for mine. You did a dirty little trick on me. Dirty little trick. Oh, what happened, Doyle? Still there. Turn your head camera. Oh, there we go. I'm hooked up, baby. I'm tight. There we go. Doubled up. Doily jigs. Hooked up, baby. fish I had first was definitely a lot bigger than this one but uh I don't think he came back for it I think this is a different fish but we're just kind of leaning over the rail here so we can keep an eye on our uh oh, okay. yeah you get to rest too while you're doing it. yeah it's like a little mini vacation oh there he is there he is that is a that is a grouper salmon. Let's see what else we got coming up here. Chris got his up. I gotta be close. And we got another grouper salmon. Oh, it's a grouper salmon. A group. Looks like a sandwich. And that's it, good. That's it. Slow pitch jigging for rockfish at its finest. Oh, that guy got a little uh, side saddle. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do a number up. What we ended up realizing was that drop the jig to the bottom, stay as vertical as possible, 
get decent pitches on the jig so we can then have a, a, a solid flutter on the jig, and that was getting strikes. This reminded us of slow pitch jigging grouper more specifically, because all these fish are tight to the bottom. They're in, they're in a structured type topography where there, there's rocks. Yes, we were getting hung up on these rocks, and yes, they're called rockfish. So that was happening, and we were doing our best to just loosen uh, uh, our, our jigs from the structure when we were stuck and continue pitching. And we were getting a lot of strikes, uh, just doing what we know how to do with slow pitch jigging, thinking grouper and snapper here in South Florida in mind. So, so our tactics be started to become very, very successful. And Will, John, and I were, were pulling up this, the salmon grouper, and we're pulling up the vermilion red uh, rockfish, and we're pulling up those cool starry uh, rockfish as, as well. And we were just having an absolute blast. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And we started to realize that just our true slow pitch that we're used to, it was working perfectly. Um, it even went as far as uh, I had a conversation with John, and I'm like, let's let's pull up, let's put on the the old trusty uh, red, gold, orange, you know, profiles on our jigs, uh, and and we started doing that, and and really the frequency of strikes seemed to increase. Uh, we were using our ridged jigs. We were using our torpedo jigs. Uh, we also uh, learned that, hey man, this is where we can drop jigs that have much more action, much more hang time, a lot more flutter pattern to them, and they're gonna be really, really effective. Same thing uh, that, that you do anywhere when dropping slow pitch jigs. You're playing current, you're playing wind, you're getting a good toss against the drift to, to buy yourself time to have your jig descend and hit the bottom so you can be vertically over that when you're performing the jig. and this, this type of strategy was, was working really, really well. And I like to think that we kind of impressed some people on the boat with how effective this, this slow pitch jigging for rockfish actually was. We were targeting the bottom 200 all the way up to 400 feet. I, if I would have had it uh, differently, if I would have done it differently, I would have been able to phase down my line to 30 pound braid or 20 pound braid to give me the, the thinner diameter line to help with my vertical presentation. By no means did I need to have a heavier line for these fish that were anywhere from one to five pounds. Um, and then the, the leader material would either be 40 or, or 50 pounds, I think would be adequate uh, for, for most of these fish. Now there are lingcod uh, in this area and our boat caught two all together. We weren't lucky enough to pull up one of those ourselves, but uh, those lingcod can be uh, much more sizable. And I don't know if they have an opportunity to, to get themselves back into the rocks, but there could be a cause to stick with 50 and 60 pound fluoro top shots in this fishery. But man, it was a lot of fun. Relatively light tackle seemed to work great. You know, bringing what we know about slow pitch jigging and being able to do this all day Sunday was an absolute blast. And we caught a ton of fish and we got a, a bunch of new fish to bring back to Florida, which we've been able to uh, enjoy with our families. And uh, man, you guys got a good out there and we had, a, we had a great time and we loved every second from the tuna to the just the touch of the yellowtail and then doing the rockfish on Sunday. Uh, fantastic.